Hey everybody, welcome back to The Lawrence Life. Today I am talking about laundry and how I keep an empty laundry basket in a house that houses 12 people. And I'm gonna give you my laundry secret. How do I keep an empty laundry basket? I don't. So that's the secret. There's no way I can keep an empty laundry basket. This is something I rarely see, even though I do my best to stay on top of the laundry because that's just how I've always been. I do not like laundry to pile up, so I'm constantly doing laundry. I just can't keep an empty laundry basket. But I am gonna share a few of our organizational and scheduling tips for laundry with our large household that help us at least stay on top of the laundry. My laundry is not ever overflowing in the laundry room or out of control. I do stay on top of it but we do have some things that we've learned along the way so that we can uh, function in an organized and hopefully drama-free way. So this is my laundry room and our house is pretty good size. I think our house is around 7,000 square feet and this is like a, a closet. It's like they forgot that they needed a laundry room for this house and then at the last minute they were like, oh, here's a little space. Let's just put the laundry room in there. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit the scale of the house. Like there's. There's no room in here. Like I can, I can fit in here and then that's it. So this is my main laundry room on the main floor of the house. And um, this is where I do my laundry. And this is also where my mother-in-law that lives upstairs and my father-in-law that lives upstairs where their laundry is done. And then all of our kids. So then downstairs in the basement, it's a finished basement. It's basically like another full house. It has a kitchen and a bedroom, living room, dining room. It has another uh, laundry room down there with a washer and dryer. So that's where my parents do their laundry. So my parents are taken care of downstairs. My mom does their laundry down there. The rest of us um, share this laundry room. And so what we've done is set up a schedule where each person knows when they're gonna do their laundry. So my mother-in-law has Saturday. I don't like to do laundry on Saturday anyways. I've talked about in other videos that Chris likes to leave on Saturdays. So my mother-in-law has Saturday. And then recently, Chris came up with a great idea of my twin, uh, oldest, our oldest boys that are twins, uh, they're 17 years old, them doing their own laundry. Like, epiphany, light bulb, why didn't I think of that? But anyways, my husband told me to stop micromanaging them and make them do their own laundry. So they do their laundry on Sunday. So Saturday and Sunday are taken by my mother-in-law and our two oldest boys. The rest of the week, I can do my laundry at my leisure. I usually do it at least every other day, so I can stay on top of it, because again, I don't like laundry to pile up. And then uh, my father-in-law used to have a laundry day, but he's had some health uh, challenges that have come up and things like that. It's harder for him to maneuver the stairs up and down and to carry the basket. and. So I do his laundry and I don't have a set day. He doesn't build up a lot of laundry, so I just kind of fit it in. If I see that his laundry's full or he says he needs laundry done, then I just kind of fit it in with my schedule, which is really nice. Um, then I don't have to give up another day because uh, I <laughs> like to keep my laundry done. Uh, my 15-year-old, our 15-year-old daughter is at camp right now. And before she left for camp, I told her to be prepared because she has increased in her laundry contribution. And so it's about that time. Now that I see how nice it is for uh, Cameron and Caleb, our oldest, to do their own laundry, I'm like, okay, Lexi, your turn. So when she comes home from camp, we're gonna talk about when she can fit in the schedule. I think I'm gonna just give her like a half day. Uh, what I do with Cameron and Caleb on Sunday is uh, certain hours of the day are for one of them, and then certain hours are for the other one, and that way I don't have to give up two days. And so I think I'm gonna do that for Lexi too. I'll tell her, okay, on this day, from this time to this time, you can get all your laundry done. So that's gonna be another person that I don't have to worry about their laundry, so I'm pretty excited about it. So. We have our laundry days scheduled, and so if you have a household where you're sharing a laundry room or you have older kids or whatever, a schedule is gonna take off a lot of stress and drama and overwhelm and piled up laundry baskets and things like that. So that's worked well for us. Now I talked about the size of my laundry room. It's so small. So I can't fold clothes in here. I can't do anything in here. So what I do, and I really don't like it, but there is a plus side. I'll tell you the plus side in a second. Uh, what I do is I take the laundry straight from the dryer and I bring it right over here to our <laughs> breakfast table. I know it's so great, yeah. But I bring it straight to the breakfast table and I organize it, I sort it. I don't fold the kids' clothes anymore except for Chase and Hannah. Chase is six, Hannah is one. <laughs> So I fold their clothes and then the other ones I just kind of drape over a chair and I call them as soon as I get the laundry out of the dryer, put it on the table and sort it, I call them and make them put it away immediately because I'm not having my breakfast table look like this all the time. And as much laundry as I do, that's what would happen. If I didn't make them put it away immediately, the laundry table, I mean, <laughs> it's a laundry table. No, it's a breakfast table. My breakfast table would look like the laundry table 24 seven if I didn't make them put it away immediately. So. 
we've had to set consequences for that before because I would say, all right, laundry's done, and nothing would happen. There'd just be like a long delay until I got onto them again and told them come do the laundry. And it's been a while since I've even had to implement that consequence. So I don't even remember what it was. It probably was grounding them from their phones or something like that, but I haven't had to use it because it worked. So that's great. I, I'm saying so a lot. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try not to do that. Uh, I almost said it again. I put the laundry on the table, sort it, fold it, and then call the kids and tell them to put it away. Sometimes I will set Hannah's and Chris and my laundry on the stairs. If I don't want to run upstairs right then, I'll set it on the stairs, but then I'm taking trips up the stairs all the time, all day. So whenever I do, I take the laundry up and put it away. And Chase uh, is putting his laundry away now, which is nice, but I do have to organize his drawers every once in a while. I'm telling you guys, when my four older kids were younger, I was so micromanaging and like couldn't handle their drawers being disorganized. So I had to put away all of their clothes. I would not let them put it away. And if they went and got something out of their drawer and disorganized it, I like, I had major OCD and it, I just freaked out. I'm doing better. Chase's drawers do not meet my standards. But he puts his clothes away, he gets his clothes out. I don't usually see them. If I do have to see them, then I will organize them and feel really good for five minutes until he goes and puts something away and messes it up. But it works, he puts his clothes away. So I'm down to putting my clothes away, putting Hannah's clothes away, and I don't even, I used to put Chris's clothes away and now I'm kind of lazy and like lay it on his side of the bed, like here's your nice clean clothes for you to put how you want. But that's mainly because he, is also like me, he likes his stuff to be organized. He has a little bit of OCD in that area. So he wants to put them away a certain way and I wasn't hanging them in the right place or putting them in the right place in the drawer. So it just works better for me to just set it out on his side of the bed and then he just puts it up when he comes in the room. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else on our laundry schedule. It works really well now and um, if you're a person who has struggled with staying on top of your laundry, then maybe even if you don't have to share your laundry days with other people, maybe it would be a good idea to have a laundry schedule for yourself anyways. And say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm doing laundry and I'm gonna put it away as soon as it's done and then see how you feel about that. And if you don't mind the laundry piling up, then you do you. I mean, whatever works for you, I don't like it. And so if you don't like it, then change it. But if you don't mind, then close the laundry room door and live your life. So it might be nice to be free from the stress of having to keep the laundry basket empty. I used to get so upset. I would do all the laundry and have an empty laundry basket. And as I was like turning to fold the last thing or pull the last thing out of the dryer, here comes one of my six kids or maybe it was five kids at the time or four kids with laundry, towels, clothes. I'm like, no, I just did the laundry. Like, why didn't you bring that before I started that dark load or that light load? I, what are you doing? I had an empty laundry basket. And uh, I had to let that go because it's just not possible. And they're kids and they live and they take showers and want their clothes and towels washed just like I do. So we figured it out and it works a lot better now. That's our laundry schedule. That's how laundry is done in the Lawrence life. And I will add a side note that's about myself. That's a secret. It's not really a secret. I don't iron like at all. I never have. I told Chris before we married that I do pretty much everything, but I don't iron. I tried to be good at it, and not only do I hate it, I'm really bad at it. Like, I iron in the wrinkles. Like, I'm trying to iron out the wrinkles, and they're like running from me, and then when I try to go get them, I actually steam them into the clothes to where when I hold it up, it looks worse than when I started. So I'm not afraid to admit that I'm not good at one thing, and that one thing is ironing. There's a lot of other things I'm not good at, I'm just kidding, but I don't iron. So if there's things that need to be ironed, then uh, Vince, my father-in-law, used to do Chris's ironing for him, which was a huge blessing. After he moved in, Chris was like, all my stuff is ironed all the time. Uh, Chris doesn't ask his dad to iron for him as much anymore because like I said, it's just a little bit harder for him to do things now, but he does still iron for him some. So we'll use the laundry mat, the um, dry cleaner. If there's things that need to be ironed, Chris will get out an iron every once in a while if he absolutely has to, but we don't do a lot of ironing in our house right now, and I don't ever do ironing. So that's what's going on. If you are new, if you've made it this far into this video, uh, thank you for joining and subscribe and hit that uh, bell so you can see other videos. And if you're returning, thank you so much for watching how we do the Lawrence Life. See you next time. Bye.